Hi, everyone. My name is Saeed Hassanpour. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Biomedical Data Science, Computer Science, and Epidemiology at Dartmouth College. And today I'm going to talk about digital pathology and pathology image analysis with deep learning. So in the last decade, there has been a tremendous amount of progress in artificial intelligence. And this progress has created many opportunities in various domains. Given these opportunities, um, our research group has been working on building novel machine learning model, uh, models for multimodal data analysis to guide precision health. Our research has a couple of directions. In one direction, we work on medical images like radiology exams and pathology uh, slides to analyze them. And in the other direction, we work on electronic medical records and uh, clinical notes, uh, and we develop natural language processing methods for information extraction from these data. Our overall goal is to integrate information from these various data sources for comprehensive, to build comprehensive models for precision health. Today, I'm going to talk about histology image analysis using deep learning. As you might know, deep learning is a sub uh, field of artificial intelligence and machine learning and is responsible for many recent uh, breakthroughs in AI. I can give you a little bit of uh, motivation for why histology image analysis is important. First of all, it's an important clinical factor for many diseases and conditions, especially for cancer patients. Also, it is a subjective and difficult task. I usually compare that to finding a a uh, green ball in a football stadium using a Google map software. And also I should mention there's a large volume of histology slides generated every day. And there is not enough number of pathologists to read them, especially in rural settings or in developing countries. So given these uh, opportunities and shortcomings, my group works on building automated machine learning models for detection, classification, and prognosis for different lesions and conditions. Here you can see some of these diseases that we have been working on. But today, um, given my limited time, I'm going to talk about one of these research projects, focused on colorectal polyps and colorectal cancer risk assessment. This is uh, part of a bigger research project, which is funded by NIH. And the overall goal of this research is building clinically uh, useful tools for collector polyp uh, assessment and also for comprehensive uh, colorectal cancer risk identification. Here, I want to give a little bit of um, clinical background for collector polyps and collector cancer. As you may know, collector cancer is one of the most common types of cancer in the United States. The majority of um, collector cancer cases arise from collector polyps, which are these growth in the lining of colon, and if they're untreated, they can develop cancer. But if the patient undergoes a screening and colonoscopy, polyps can be resected and, the and cancer can be prevented. But the tricky thing about collector polyps is they reoccur. So after the baseline colonoscopy, the, patients, the patient needs to undergo um, uh, surveillance and, uh, and the frequency of these follow-up surveillance and colonoscopies depends on the histological classification of polyps at the baseline colonoscopy. But this histological classification is not an easy task. I did a literature review and I found these studies that um, focus on characterizing the difficulty of these uh, task here you can see the years of this study, the number of polyps in each study, and the number of pathologists who were involved. In the last column, you can see the Kappa score, which is the degree of agreement between the pathologist in reading these polyps. As you can see, the Kappa score is um, is mostly in the fair or poor range. So there is a significant amount of variability among the among pathologists in reading and characterizing collector polyps slides. So given this vari variability, we uh, aim to develop and evaluate a new deep learning model to detect 
and classify collector of polyps on whole slide images. This is a, this is a collaboration between my group and uh, Dr. Arif Srivanata and his group from the Department of Pathology at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center, and also Dr. Elizabeth Berry from the Dartmouth Epidemiology Department and her colleagues from Vitamin D Calcium Polyp Prevention Clinical Trial. In our project, we focus on four types of polyps, which are the most common types of polyps and are major criteria in the US Multi-Society Task Force on Colorectal Cancer Screening and Surveillance Guidelines. And here you can see the, the name of these polyps and classical example of each type. This is a multi-institutional project. So we had access uh, from uh, access uh, to slides from both internal and uh, external data sources. Our internal data source was uh, Dharma Sishkak Medical Center from which we had access to more than 500 FFP HNE slides. We partitioned these slides to training sets, validation sets for hyperparameter tuning and internal test set. Our external test set uh, data set was only used for external evaluation and uh, uh, it uh, includes 238 FFP HNE slides from vitamin D calcium polyp prevention study. This external data set comes from 24 different institutions spanning 13 states, so it's a very di diverse data set. Also, for these slides, we had access to local pathologist diagnosis uh, parsed from corresponding pathology reports. Our approach in this project uh, is a supervised uh, learning approach. So we collaborated with five GR pathologists to collect annotations for our uh, data. Uh, for, annota for annotating uh, our training set and validation set, we focus on region of interest annotations by putting bounding box around polyps and classify these bounding boxes. For our internal and external test sets, we ask five GI pathologists to independently read and uh, read the slides and classify them uh, based on the polyps that they see in each slide. We uh, established the ground truth for these slides based on the majority vote of these five GI pathologists. This is the example of region of interest annotation for a sample slide in our training set. This slide shows the data flow of a study. You can see our internal data set was used only for training and hyperparameter tuning and internal validation. And our external data set was only used for external evaluation. As you may know, uh, all the slide images are high resolution, and a very large size. So given our current hardware, we cannot analyze them all at once. So we break every uh, slide to these fixed size um, patches and we build a deep learning model to classify each of these patches. Also our pipeline for this, uh, our deep learning uh, pipeline for this analysis is uh, open source and is publicly available on GitHub. After this patch classification, we use the distribution of predictive patches for whole slide inference using a decision tree. This hierarchical classification is based on how pathologists perform this, this task in clinical practice. The thresholds here I learned based on the grid search and cross validation. So for evaluation, we compare the results of our model to ground truth labels based on the majority vote of five GI pathologists involved in our study. Also, we compared the results of our study to local pathologist diagnosis parsed from pathology reports. This evaluation for both internal and external uh, data sets uh, is summarized in this table. We can see accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity for each type of polyps and also overall. As you can see here, in all cases, either our model performance is slightly higher than the local pathologist or the performance is uh, pretty close. So we ran a statistical analysis that shows the, the difference between the performance of the local pathologist and the model is not statistically significant. So we state that um, uh, local pathologists and model are on par on both internal and external data sets for this task. We also perform error analysis. And as you can see in these 
confusion matrices for local pathologists and model the type of errors that uh, both local pathologists and our model make are pretty similar. We also implemented a simple visualization approach that highlighted the patches that contributed the most to hold the slide label. And we integrated this visualization with the easy to use graphical interface. So pathologists can use them in uh, their practice. So as the next step, we ran a clinical trial to measure the impact of this AI augmented uh, digital system on pathologist performance in clinical practice. So uh, we established and run a design and run a crossover study. And in this study, we measure the accuracy and also assessment time uh, uh, for pathologists. So this is the overview of this crossover study, which has two arms. Which arm is a stethoscope using microscope, the other one, is using our AI augmented digital system. We recruited 15 pathologists across New Hampshire from two medical centers and every arm. Uh, the pathologists read 100 colorectal polyps. And after 12 weeks, uh, 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 the participant read the same slice in the shuffled order. And we measured the uh, time uh, uh, of assessment and also accuracy using either of these um tools this figure shows the effect of our digital system on accuracy of pathologies for each participant so as you can see the classification accuracy of the pathologist overall on average increased from 73.9 percent to 80.8 percent which was statistically significant however as we anticipated the uh, time uh, of assessment for pathologists increased a little bit. So an average is increased by 8.8 .8 seconds. And uh, this was uh, basically true for all type of polyps and also at all training levels. But the encouraging point is the time difference in classification decreased substantially as users uh, experience progress with our system. So as you can see here at the last quantile, the evaluation time uh, got very smaller compared to where uh, the pathologist started. However, when they were using microscope, the evaluation time didn't change significantly. So we hope that as pathologists gain more experience in using our tool, uh, the evaluation time decreases as well. We also ran uh, system usability surveys that uh, showed uh, overwhelmingly positive feedback from pathologists. And as a next step, we are looking to integrating other clinical data with our medical image analysis system for better uh, diagnosis and classification. We also looking into identifying other patient outcomes and extending our clinical trial. At the very end, uh, I want to thank uh, my group member who contributed to this research project, the pathology department at Dumbers Hitchcock Medical Center, our collaborators, and funding sources. Thank you very much for your attention.